Hi, I'm Campbell and welcome to Wind Up Club on Malbec Day. The 17th of April is World Malbec Day. Why, you ask? Well, this is the 183rd anniversary of the day where French sailors took the Malbec grape to Argentina. And that's really not true at all. Uh, there's no reason why, or at least none that I found, other than crass consumerism, uh, dreamt up by wines of Argentina and fair play to them. And much more to the point, it gives us an excuse to get pissed on a Tuesday. So, a little bit about Malbec. So, almost all of you will think of Malbec as being Argentinian. Three quarters of the world's Malbec comes from Argentina. The overwhelming majority of that uh, comes from Mendoza. It is French. Uh, those of you who are familiar with very, very old Bordeaux will know it uh, as a Bordeaux blending grape that uh, hasn't featured in Bordeaux for a very, very long time. Its home is actually in Cahors uh, in the southwest of France. Uh, Cahors is a great town, beautiful old town, you know, even by French standards. Um, it's, uh, it's properly old. Uh, that's where Malbec comes from, down there, um, historically known as Côte which is C-O circumflex T. Uh, the French have got wind of the fact that Malbec has got huge global uh, popularity. They've kind of moved away from calling it coat because uh, nobody's heard of coat, uh, though it is fun to say. Uh, so you'll see a lot in shops these days, Cahors Malbec, uh, and that's them kind of jumping on that bandwagon. So what we're going to taste today to celebrate Malbec Day is four different Malbecs. And We've also got elsewhere uh, on the site, we have a Tesco Malbec for £12 that we'll be comparing these wines to, particularly these two wines. So we've got several different types of Malbec here. So on my right, your left, we have from Majestic, we have the Hey Malbec! Um, exclamation mark, uh, which is colourful, bright, it's got a superhero on the front of it. Uh, and that is $12.99 from Majestic. Next up, we have the Ocaso Grand Melbic uh, 2012 from Naked Wines for $11.99. And then we've got a couple up here, a little bit different, both in the sort of mid, you know, early to mid 30s uh, price point. So a lot more expensive uh, depending on vintage. So this one is from Chateau du Cèdre, which is Le Cèdre in Cahors. So Chateau du Cèdre is one of the top producers in Cahors. So we're gonna get a really, really good, well, really, really expensive, uh, hopefully really, really good uh, French example of Malbec. And up here we have the Pulenta Grand Corte 2013 vintage. And this is a Malbec predominant blend. So that's going to be an interesting contrast to these two down here. It's obviously, you know, nearly three times the price, but a lot of Malbec drinkers like me are of the opinion that Malbec's a better blending grape than it is a 100% varietal grape, especially when you start to get right up the, the quality and price uh, scale. So we'll see if, uh, if my instincts are true there. Um, I have to give you a little bit of a confession. I'm biased uh, on that price point, so I may well prove my own point for myself, but you know, there you go. So let's start down here. So it is the Hey Malbec, which as we give you the close up of it, um, we, have a, we have a superhero whose um, requirements seem to be um, that he'd like some Malbec um, to you know, prevent crime. Um, I know nothing about Malbec's crime preventing abilities. Uh, it's a cool bottle, you know. Um, I don't personally think that exclamation marks have, have any, anything uh, to do with being on a bottle of wine, but it's got one. Um, it's trying hard to be cool. Is it trying too hard? We shall find out. Now, when you're at this kind of price point um, with Malbec, I expect it to be unoaked, much fruitier, much easier drinking, and then as you sort of nudge up the quality scale, we start to see oak and the, the uh, and more vanilla sort of 
American oak flavor profiles will start to become apparent in the wine. You know, you can't obviously see around here, but this is, this is much, much lighter when you look at roughly the same amount of wine, you know, in each glass. This is much lighter in color, much lighter to look at. Comes across as very clearly a Malbec, little whiff of violet um, on the nose. I definitely say that is, that is on oaks. That's very light, that's very, very pleasant, very peeling. Um, it's a nice wine. We're gonna rattle through these um, quite quickly so that we're not spending 20 minutes on this. But um, the problem I've got with this wine is it's a, it's a seven pound sunny day barbecue wine in a, in a 13 pound frock. Um, and for that reason, I'm gonna give this a ways of, uh, of five. Um, there's nothing wrong with this wine. It's a nice wine. I drink this quite happily. If I bought this for seven pounds, you know, eight absolute tops, I'd be absolutely delighted. But the cynic in me, whilst I really like a, a nice and interesting wine label, says you're just trying a wee bit too hard on the stuff that doesn't even matter and maybe not enough on the things that do. So again, I heartily recommend, you know, entry level or cheap Malbec, unoaked, simple production for, you know, nice, juicy, sunny day drinking. But I don't think this is the bottle for me. Um, Moving up to a castle from Naked Wines. Uh, if you are a Naked Wines um, customer, you'll know that you can buy uh, their wines for a little bit cheaper than non-Naked Wine customers could buy it in el elsewhere in the world. So although it's a pound cheaper to buy as a Naked customer, I mix <laughs> you, can, you can buy it, you can buy anything cheap um, if you're Naked, if you're a Naked Wines um, customer, shall we say. So I'm, I'm expecting that this might offer even more uh, bang for its buck. So we'll give it a sniff. Again, very Malbec-y. Uh, I don't think I'd be making too many mistakes on this one on a blind sniff test. Much more malbec -y. Um, much richer, much stronger in terms of flavours, still that little bit of a, a violety look. You know, it's darker in colour, it's richer in taste. Those blueberries uh, are sort of coming through there. Again, if I was a bit, there's a tiny whiff of oak in there, but I don't think it has been oaked. I think that's just classic Malbec flavours coming through. Um, by comparison, I would say that, uh, that this is a seven. Um, absolutely happily buying this again. Um, as a Naked Wines customer, if this appeared in a, in, a, in a mixed case or, you know, I just sort it out, happily buy that for this price point. It's a very good wine for the money. So, yeah, yeah, I'm definitely happy with the Sivan on this. If you compare it to the Tesco Taste the Difference uh, Malbec, very, very on a par. Um, this... This might be a slightly better seven, if that's not counterintuitive, same price. Um, nobody's gonna be unhappy with this wine for 12 pounds and uh, quite happily buy it again. Okay, so still at 100% uh, Malbec. Let's move up to this wine, which um, very simple, very clear bottle. Um, on these two, the more expensive ones, you'll see they're still sealed. We Coravan them uh, about an hour ago to give them some time to breathe. We poured out glasses of these an hour ago as well, so that they were sort of given a fair chance. So, and um, this is 2007 vintage, so this is an old bottle, as or said at least um, 10 years in bottle. Interesting vintage in France. Um, cracking vintage uh, further east of Cahors in the Rhone Valley. Um, move a little bit west and a little bit north uh, into Bordeaux and um, very variable. Um, vintage, not a, not a classic by any means. So again, in vintage terms, tough to know what I would make of it. North, northeast of it is very good. Northwest of it is very meh. Um, but let's give it a little whirl. Uh, 
as you'd expect from you know an old world wine, um, much more reticent on the nose. When we were giving these a try earlier, this was a lot more closed, uh, especially uh, on you know initial initial sniff before you give it a give it a proper whirl. So it's a lot more closed off, a um, lot more savoury, earthy notes coming through as opposed to the much, especially this one, much fruitier, much more kind of obvious Malbecian. Don't think that's a word. Made up balls. It's Grand Malbec Day, uh, uh, so you know Malbecian is now a word. Yeah, mm. it's staggeringly different. Could only be, frankly, um, old world. Um, it's weird, it's that earthy quality, you know, that taste of the soil in a, in a very, very good way. It's got a Burgundian sort of whiff to it. It's got that, it's, it's quite light bodied. Um, it's what, medium, but it's, it's, it's on the light side of medium. It's definitely lighter than some of the some of the Argentinians, um, but it's got that thing you'd expect with you know Pinot Noir from Burgundy. It gets that really earthy, farmy um, taste to it. That's really really nice. Um, sets off food beautifully. Very very savoury. Completely different from a New World uh, Malbec fruit bomb. Um, really like this wine. Um, glad I really like this wine because uh, it's you know in that mid thirties, not a cheap bottle of wine. Um, I'm going to give it an eight. It's better than these two. It ought to be, uh, you know, more than more than twice the price, nearly three times the price uh, of of those two wines. Again, law of diminishing returns always comes in. I uh, I really think if you if you if you've got the 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 money and you like Malbec, I really think you should have a try at top end um, Cajar because. You wouldn't pick it out of a lineup as being a Malbec, but it's really interesting to taste them um, side by side. And one more taste. Yeah, it's it's just such a a different different world. Um, again, these are very good with steaks and barbecues and classic Malbec mixes like this. This is much more earthy. Um, would go well with a, a wide range of foods. Um, in terms of food matches, the obvious ones with Malbec is uh, is steak, uh, red meat, big stuff. If you're more of a vegetarian persuasion, then anything in that kind of mushrooms, earthy sort of stuff, um, by all accounts. I mean, I'm from Glasgow, it's not my area, but my mum and sister are vegetarians. Um, but anything, anything in that kind of mushrooms and peppers and stuff like that is going to go well um, with the Malbec. So lastly, on to the Polenta Gran Corti, um, 2013. So this wine, he said, checking the wine, this is blend. So this is 42% Malbec. So it's predominantly, but not majority Malbec. 22% Cabernet Sauvignon, 20% Merlot, 10% Petit Verdot and 6% Tanat. So it is mainly being reunited with uh, some of its compatriots from uh, the Bordeaux region. And I'd expect that to come through in the taste. Uh, Tanat is quite interesting, mainly finding a home in South America. Uh, and even there, predominantly in Uruguay. Um, quite like Tanat. Tough, tough grape. Um, difficult to make good wine with Tanat because uh, it's a hardy, a hardy soul. Um, but the Cabernet Sauvignon, Merlot, Petit Verdot, the, 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 the Cab Sauve and the Merlot in particular will, should round out um, the Malbec. So again, give it a swirl. The difference on the nose between the new world and the old world again is, uh, is staggering. Um, much more open, much more fruity, much bigger, much more rounded um, wine. And that's just, it's just such a different world. Um, the reason why I think Malbec works better as a blending grape is that when you get from these kind of wines, the sort of 12, 15 pound wines, up to 20 plus pounds, it's quite tough to tell the difference in a pure Malbec. 
because I'm not saying it's a dumb grape, it's not a dumb grape, but there's, there's a, I've never had like a 50 pound bottle of Malbec and gone, wow, that's an extraordinary expression of Malbec. There's almost only so much you can do out of it. There's a, like a, a peak to what you can do as 100% Malbec. And I find it really difficult to tell the difference between 15 pound and 25 pound uh, in a pure Malbec. Whereas when you get into that kind of 20, 25 pounds plus, I would rather have a blended Malbec than a 100% Malbec because you put in the other grapes and then Cab Sauve gives it more structure, more backbone, definitely more acidity. So again, more cut, more precision, will go even better um, with food. Merlot brings its classic flavors of, you know, plumminess, brings a fleshiness and more rounding uh, to the, to the mouthfeel. All of those grapes give it more tannin. Um, clearly seen some oak. Uh, so the vanilla uh, flavors are coming through. It's just a whole lot more complex in a whole different way. Um, I think it's a cracker. Um, I'm going to, I think it's a better wine than this one, or it's definitely a more interesting wine. Well, this is interesting, but it's, it's interesting in a different way. Um, I'm going to wedge this one a nine versus this one an eight um, because this is the wine, if you've got the money, if you've got the, if you've got the dollars, then if you like high-end Malbec, then 100% Malbec, then I'd encourage you to find a high-end blend and taste them side by side. And I'd be very surprised if you don't immediately get what I mean. I say so much more complexity, so much more breadth of flavours, quality on the palate, vanilla flavours coming through, but, but the stronger flavours stand up uh, to more food types, greater acidity. It's a much better made, better rounded wine. I think this is this is really, really interesting. Um, if you already like Malbec, then um, even at lower price points, try a blend. Um, see what you think. Um, not everybody agrees with me, um, obviously. But try it out. And uh, that's about it uh, from Wind Up today. Um, I hope you enjoy uh, the April 17th Malbec Day. Um, it coincides very nicely with Wednesday 18th of April, which is World Red Wine Hangover Day. So uh, enjoy it, uh, have fun, uh, try out different things, try out unoaked versus oaked, try out you know inexpensive versus more expensive, try out blends. But most of all, don't get wound up, get wind up. Cheers. <laughs>